two pots, and an entire team sweep in one turn. Gale Force is smooth, it's elegant, it's powerful, and it is daunting to start. But just look at this clear and all those actions. I want to make this more accessible, so I spent a month collecting 11 different clears, creating selection priorities, three different tier lists, and we're going to have a detailed walk through three different matches. First though, let's dive into why you would use this strategy. The term Gale Force has grown into any strategy that uses an action differential to win matchups, which is very broad, but let's be clear, when we're comparing this to tanking, this strategy takes more time, period. It's about double the amount of time for each clear. Now, the thing is, this does very well versus the current meta. It just makes Catria Balls crumble, and there's really no archetype that you can't use this against. The other big thing is, it gets you off the gotcha carousel. Summoners, these units are cheap and they last a long time compared to tanks, which lately have been lasting a month before their counter comes out. The other thing is pots. <laughs> Summoners, am I the only one who thinks pots are just the most annoying part of this game? And player face strategies in general, don't worry about them. They're very easy to get with those. It's also extremely satisfying taking the game into your own hands, not having to worry about AI, it really makes this strategy worthwhile. But let's get into how to make a Gale Force team. All right, we're gonna focus more on Aether Raids because that's really where Gale Force is at its best. Now, teams vary greatly depending on what you have in your barracks, but in general, two things really dictate how they look. In standard Aether Raids, it's your initiator, which in the current meta has to be able to defeat a whole lot of things and then it's your mythics. You may have excellent mythics for this, and you may be stuck with Milla and Air. The more passive your mythics are though, the fancier your carry needs to be. Supports are more of a tertiary concern and are used to smooth over the weaknesses of your other units. Ideally though, you end up with something like this. Now this team has nine actions, which is kind of my recommended minimum. With the bulk of saviors right now, you need a little bit extra in these teams. But let's look at Chaos Season. Now, the big difference with Chaos Season is you only get one dancer. That means you have to utilize units that get multi-actions in different ways. Now, supports are more important because they have to take more of an active role. Also, generally, you need a fancier carry. The big difference is you aren't as worried about killing power because these units don't have mythic buffs behind them. Now, let's get into the rankings for each class and different units you can choose. Let's look at initiators up first, and the first priority that you have to have is that your initiator has to kill things. <laughs> now this is much harder than it used to be, and true damage is almost mandatory even with the bolt tower. Uh, brave hits also help a ton, but the good news is IS has given us a lot of different things, so you actually have options right now. Priority two is how easily do you get more actions? Now, you wanna look for skills within preference weapons. Do you get cooldown reduction or acceleration? Do you get blade effects, null follow-up or tempo? This is obviously easier for infantry units because they have more access to skills. If you're using a flyer or a cav, you really wanna pay attention to the preference weapon. And always remember, the more things a unit has in the preference weapon, the easier this strategy is going to be. Priority three is mobility, and it is so important. Obviously here, calves and flyers have an advantage over infantry, but you've also got Pathfinder, Trace, and Canto. I'm including warping here, so the ability to get into Wings of Mercy range is huge. You've got Assault Troop and Tempest skills. There is just a range of different ways for you to get your unit from point A to point B. But let's get into the actual tier list. Now this is not exhaustive, but it does include a lot of the common units, but I wanna know in the comments, let me know who your favorite initiator is. I always love to hear these things. Just a couple caveats. The first is to be ranked in this tier list, you have to be able to get a second action. The other is I completely ignored seasonal restrictions. Obviously you're going to be able to use regular units more than legendaries, but I find it's better just to have a quality list as opposed to an availability list. Let's hit tier four first. Now these are fun units, but they're not really practical in the current meta. The Leafs just don't have the killing power and neither does legendary Edelgard. She also has some weird solo conditions that don't really go well with a lot of what you need to do in a Gale Force team. 
Tier 3 are units that have two or three key components, but they still need significant help. Keep in mind though, they're still usable, especially if you have something like the Bolt Tower. Now in this tier, we have units like Legendary Ephraim. He doesn't have NFU and he can't one shot, but he does have Kanto and good mobility. You have Ascendant Marita who has slaying, cooldown reduction, no follow-up, but no true damage and no tempo here. You have Fallen Edelgard, who's kind of a mixed bag with three actions, damage reduction, special fighter, but she does lack true damage. She has poor mobility and she has beast limitations. We move on up to tier two and these units have something unique about them that set them apart, but aren't really the complete package. They can be elite with the right support though. We have Flame Lin up first and she has slaying, true damage, cooldown reduction, guard, also healing, and she needs tempo. She also needs no follow up and she needs special acceleration. So there's, <laughs> you can see kind of these units have good and bad. Legendary Erica has no slaying, but has damage reduction, special acceleration, no follow up, true damage, Kanto, but she really has a terrible attack stat. <laughs> now, you're probably wondering why I am so high on flyers and honestly, you're trading special acceleration problems with duo hindrance issues. For the most part though, I will take that trade because it is generally easier to either snipe a duo's hindrance or take out the duo units themselves. In the end though, you get increased range out of these units as well as mobility and I think they're absolutely fantastic. You have Duo Lin with Slaying Brave. She self dances, she has flyer mobility. She's weak to guard though and requires a duo skill activation, but she has access to disarm trap and is still very good in this meta. Now, Duo Leg Yarn has most of that same stuff, but she also gets a lot more bonuses. I think this is a better unit than people give her credit for. She just doesn't have quite the impact as the past ninja units have. So we get into tier one and these units are all special, but they're also finished products. First up, we have Flame Tana and she has slang, color advantage versus everyone but reds, half NFU. She gives Kanto to everyone and I cannot express how good that is but she also needs to activate a harmonic skill to get a Gale Force. She's very weak to reds and Duo Duma is around a lot. <laughs> but she runs Heavy Blade well, she has access to lethality and access to disarm trap. We're gonna skip over Ninja Corrin. She's obviously amazing and I've got a highlight reel to show you there. And Summer Dimitri, I mean, he's really good. But I wanna talk about Brave Erica because I forget how good this unit is. She has slaying. Armor and Cav effective, damage reduction, half NFU, half tempo, true damage, and Kanto. This unit has everything, and the fact that she's below Legendary Nana really signifies a shift in the meta. Now, near saves have become bulkier and bulkier, and that's why in that list, it is now more important that you have stopping power. If you rewind three years ago, it was actually a detriment for your unit to have too much stopping power. They would kill a unit without proccing Gale Force. That is very rarely a problem at this point. So Legendary Nana has half NFU, ignores damage reduction, and prevents specials from proccing when they're the defensive kind. She also has Kanto, True Damage, and Desperation. She would be perfect if she also had Special Acceleration. But that brings us to Tier 0, and these units can almost run Gale Force on their own. We have Brave Self up first, and uh, this laundry list. This unit has Kanto, Slaying, True Damage, Built-in Miracle, No Follow-up, Moves 4 Spaces, and doesn't have Special Acceleration because they couldn't give him everything. <laughs> Uh, I guess he also doesn't have tempo, but this is a very, very good unit and the ability to get into Wings of Mercy so easily is just a feather in his cap. This unit is amazing. Which brings us to Summer Edelgard. This unit has slaying, damage reduction, a brave weapon, and can get three actions. The thing about this unit is she just synergizes with so many others in the meta and that three actions is just clutch in so many modes. There are definitely units that can stop this, but I have to put this unit as the best Gale Force unit in the game. None of these units are really going to be the silver bullet. If you're gonna have a Gale Force team, you generally want two initiators so that you can cover two different types of threats. So just keep that in mind. We have to start with Summer Edelgard because she's just the 
premier gale force unit. Now, she demonstrates the melding of hit and run and gale force, and there are enough actions for luxury picks like Duo Thor. You do have to be wary about deflect melee, and it's becoming increasingly unpopular because this unit exists. So keep that in mind. Now, we also want to watch out for blue near saviors. They can be problematic, but summoners. This is Gale Force made easy. If you're brand new, this is the unit you start with. Getting all those extra actions is just absolutely phenomenal, and she has a lot of stopping power. Pair her with Duo Thor, and this unit will take you really far. But next up, we need to talk about Ninja Corrin, the free to play solution. And of course, we have to show DTM's clear here. DTM is amazing at using this unit and you can see him upload weekly just how well he does against every kind of defense you can think of. The thing that stands out about this unit though is the versatility, especially when you use it in combination with Bolt Tower. Now, you can see in this clear, DTM comes around the side, absolutely smacks a unit that, by the way, was not hit by the Bolt Tower, takes out the duo unit, and then just uses Hatari Azura and Korin's duo skills to crush the enemy team. This is a lot of actions, so much so that you notice the only unit who has Gale Force here is Edelgard. That's kind of crazy. You will want to watch out for teams that are just all duos, which exist now. But this demonstrates one of the advantages to Gale Force using a duo skill, and that's not having to rely on blade checks. That is so huge and was the bane of every Gale Forcer's existence for so long. If you're looking for a good free to play template on how to do this kind of clear, check out DTM stuff. He puts on a clinic. Next up, we have Elder V, and this is another champion of the free to play folk. This is a good representative for all of the miscellaneous infantry units that you're going to see with this Dimitri. Now, Murderous Lion definitely does help and sets him a bit apart, but with the right support, you can fit just about any unit into this role. Winter Bernie is really important. Now, in case you haven't ever done this strategy, Winter Bernie does one damage and then Reciprocal Aid on Dimitri is used on a level one Plumeria to switch the HPs. Once that happens, that gets you into Wings of Mercy range. It is really clever. It does take some specialized units though, and it points out how the further down the tier list you go, the harder it is to get teams to work. But look at how he just absolutely takes apart this cav line. Traditionally, this is very hard for a Gale Force unit, but that's probably a good way to transition us into support units and how to prioritize them. Support units are so much more subjective. The thing is you're using them to cover weaknesses in the teams that you have. But I think this is a pretty good list on how to prioritize. And the first one up is the ability to create actions. Now this is dancers. This is secondary initiators that have easy access to Gale Fours. And hopefully while they're doing this, they also perform a supportive role. Priority two is any unit that helps you proc Gale Fours easier. <laughs> so this is adds special acceleration, uh, decreases cooldown, extra points if you're not limited by movement type, by the way. So your Valorias and your Raphaels who can give cooldown to flyers and calves as well. Next up is increasing mobility. Now, the reliance on Wings of Mercy has decreased dramatically because of all the interesting ways you can get your units where they need to be. You can use order buffs, warping with either Ash or something like Lilith, and then to change fate is absolutely amazing. Priority four is in combat enhancements. Now, you prefer an initiator didn't need these, but we're not in a perfect world. <laughs> these can still be very powerful though. Let's go ahead and look at the rankings. All right, I'm not going to go into every one of these because we just don't have that kind of time, but I do want to discuss generalities in the individual tiers. Now, tier four, these are all units that are kind of one dimensional. They do something specific very well, but in our current meta, supports have to do more, and they have been. IS has been releasing some amazing support units. We're just not in the days of male corn anymore, where just giving stats is fine. <laughs> um, these units can still contribute though. Of note is the OG Azura. 
who probably gets bumped up the second her arcane lance comes out because those arcane weapons have been absolutely amazing and have taken over tier three. Look at all of these dancers. Arcane weapons came along and made them so much easier. They are fantastic, and if you get an arcane weapon on them, I think you're gonna have a lot of fun. Fallen Lilith and Halloween Tiki would definitely get a bump if they had some kind of dragon gale force, as is though they're down here in tier three. And if Lilith ever gets a dragon gale force, both her forms get a huge, huge bump. Next up, we have tier two, and each of these brings something unique to the table. At the bottom, we have cooldown reduction specialists like Fallen Ninian, Na, and Legendary Hector. If you need that, they're absolutely amazing. But then we get to Bridal Catria, who is herself amazing, but understand that triangle attack is difficult to work in the context of Gale Force. I know, I know you diehards are out there, and I've seen your clears. Yes, she can be amazing. She's just harder to work with. Next, we have Legendary Azura, and the mobility and huge buffs she gives, are they're just clutch. This unit stays good. Next up is Winter Bernie, and my beef with her is that while she does provide something very unique and is excellent, she's not very good at anything else. And I normally like a unit past tier two to be able to do a whole lot of different things. Here we come to tier one and all of these units just excel at their position. These are true building blocks and not just secondary fillers. We have of course Peony and Hatari Azura and the only reason I'm not going to talk about them more is because everyone has them. The fact that they can dance and they can dance someone else with the duo skill is very, very good. Next up we have Raphael and that cooldown reduction to anyone is fantastic, but if you just saw my video, he is actually a very good initiator all on his own. The same is the case with Valoria who got an amazing refine, but minus two cooldown reduction is just huge and she has extra stuff to boot. Now, Legendary Elwood. I have gone back and forth on this list and depending on the day you talk to me, he could bump either higher or lower. The fact is he gets bonus doubler, Kanto can also be a very good initiator. The downside is it can be very hard to match attack stats in Aether Raids. Tier zero comes along and these units significantly enhance an entire team. We have Duo Thor and I went back and forth on this unit as well. But the thing is, Duo Thor effectively deletes the action of some of the most powerful units in the game. Look at Brave Sela, for instance. Limiting him to one movement is just clutch. And she adds true damage to the team as well, which is amazing. She's also a great cleanup unit, though. Now, Duo Chrom, do I need to go over this unit? Cooldown reduction, pseudo refresher, helps with mobility, and hits really hard. We have a clear in just a second where he is the carry. This unit is amazing. And then Brave Krom, who has all that stuff, but can also proc Gale Force. Well, almost all. He can't do the cooldown reduction, but still, this is a really good unit and he works fantastically with Asker because of the way his weapon works. Legendary Ninian is a self refresher that hits really hard, debuffs the enemy, buffs her dance target, and she gets a free Gale Force just for dancing someone. That's amazing, and the sweep effect is completely swept on. And then we have Harmonic Cordelia, who I think is the best Gale Force support in the game right now. This unit is made for Gale Force. She hands out Brave like candy, gives an orders buff, procs Gale Force like a tier one initiator. We'll do a walkthrough with her later, but trust me, this unit is phenomenal. Now, let's take a look at some sample clears with different support units. First up, we have Brave Mary Ann, and Summoners, Brave Mary Ann is really good in Chaos Season. What you wanna do in Chaos Season is basically find a way to cheat, especially when you're going up against high mobility teams like this. Now, this is a clinic in how to deal with Sigurd lines, but Mary Ann hits hard, she has damage reduction, she refreshes a unit, and she doesn't have a damaging special, which is not great, but she can still perform a very good support role. If she had that damaging special, she would probably be in the carry list as opposed to this though. But look at this. Like this is so annoying in Chaos Season and you're going in there with all of these different types of refreshers and you're just absolutely destroying things. This is how you do it. 
Can we do a Gale Force video without bringing up Oblivion's Tellius Force here? Valoria is another unit that just doesn't age. This clear is about a year old, and it is amazing to me that the meta is still about the same. But Valoria is what makes this Thor clear work. She can step in as a secondary initiator, and that refine she has is amazing. Cooldown minus two, tempo, and bonus neutralization, and she is a potent combination that can just destroy things. Summoners, this was a great unit when she came out, and she has just gotten better. This is an example of how well Gale Force units age. Last up, I wanted to look at some Gale Force Dancer action here, and I've got Azura showing here, and this is probably the ideal build that you can do right now, but we're gonna pull up some old footage from a user called Chocolate Beef. <laughs> now, this is old. You're gonna love this. This is a flyer ball with OG Azura. <laughs> I, I bring this up though, and I mean, we just talked about it, but look at how well these units age. This is still a unit you can use. Also, boy, times were simpler, weren't they? <laughs> Gale Force has always been around though, and for whatever reason, IS has decided to make it easier. I suggest you take advantage of it, and the unit you invest in now could show up in a highlight reel three years from now about how that unit is still good. <laughs> but anyway, I think it's time to talk about Mythics. Mythics are the units that you're stuck with, and sometimes they fit and sometimes they don't, but you generally just have to make do. Now, these units, if you look, have all the same priorities as supports, but the bar is lower. <laughs> Now, priority one, ability to create extra actions. This is going to be your dancers and anyone who can proc Gale Force. Priority two, I, I mean, Asker is amazing and we'll take infantry pulse here. Just something that helps us with cooldown. Priority three is mobility and this is actually an area where these units kind of shine. You've got Ash with the warping and Dogger with a pathfinder and there's just a lot of different things you can do and it's kind of a fun thing you can do with some of these mythics. Now, priority four is in combat enhancements, but generally for mythics is a very nice way of saying smite bot. <laughs> Let's get right to the tier list. And I want to remind you, this is just for Gale Force, okay? I would never have Elamine in tier three otherwise. Tier three, speaking of it, most of these units are probably better suited to tanking strats. Now, they can be equipped to support, but they don't expressly help your team. Tier two aren't the best Gale Forces, but can work. I do want to point out Naga, who isn't a Gale Force unit specifically, but her buffs are just amazing with dragon effective, guaranteed follow-up, and a lot of visible buffs. This unit is phenomenal in the current meta. Dagger is fantastic, but you mostly want to replace her B skill with Wings of Mercy, and that really hits her killing potential quite a bit. Then you have Altina with her brave weapon, and she can be excellent at cleanup. The hard part is meeting blade checks, which can truly be a difficult thing. Now, we get to tier one and summoners, to be honest, this is quite a jump, seriously. We have Reagan who has Kanto and is amazing at pinning units. She's also good for cleanup. She can run Gale Force, but she's not perfect at it. Still, this unit is excellent at taking out those units that are problem children. Sather Shell is nothing short of incredible. Next, we have the dancers and I do I need to talk about them? They are both excellent. We have Thor up here. Understand that Thor took a bit of a hit with Arvel and that blade effect that she gives out isn't quite as good, but she is still a very good unit and can possibly used, be used as a carry. We're gonna see a replay of that here in just a second. Then, tier zero. Now, this is another pretty dramatic jump here. Ash is fantastic with giving out hypermobility. You have against teams like the Catria Balls where you possibly don't need as many Wings of Mercy units because you can just line the edge of their threat range and then warp them in with Ash. It's pretty incredible, but this unit can also run Gale Force and buff the attack of her allies. It's fantastic. Asker, oh, we have a whole team cooldown, which is fantastic. He runs Gale Force very well. He has tempo built in. He gives an Omni plus four of in-combat buffs and also gives out follow-up denial. 
This unit is incredible for Gale Force teams. And lastly, we have Sather. This is the only anti-refresher right now. Keep in mind in a perfect world, you could actually freeze four units with that anti-refresh skill. Practically though, you're only gonna get two or even one. Still, this unit also gives up fallout denial and has true damage in her weapon for cleanup. But summoners, let's take a look at some sample clears. You guys know Thor is like PM1's favorite unit, right? <laughs> now this is just a crazy build. It does take a specialty unit like Winter Bernie to pull it off, but still PM1 makes this look easy. This unit has armor effectiveness, guaranteed follow-up, which helps a ton. And when your mythic is a carry, it opens up a ton of supportive options and lets you be a bit more creative with how things work. Next up, we have Mythic Air, and that's right, we're going to do two PM1 clips back to back. <laughs> now, he's working with Freya right now, and is there anything this guy can't do? Seriously. This build he's using on air is actually pretty common. It smites, it debuffs, it buffs. This unit is very versatile for a Mythic and has stood the test of time, but you probably would prefer to have another one in your barracks. But hey, if PM1 can make this unit work, so can you. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we have Sather, and I, maybe this is just recency bias, but this unit is amazing. Now, we're gonna go over this clear in detail in just a little bit, but Catria Balls in Astra Season have become really fierce because of Arful. High level Astra is actually hard again, and this unit deletes actions, which is fantastic. The way the weapon works at the end of the turn means you can perform some sort of action like smite before you do it and then trace over to the spot you need to be. She also makes pots getting easier and you guys know how I feel about pots. <laughs> but she kills things too and summoners, look at her freeze Joshua and Krom. That is absolutely phenomenal. There are so many folks who are sleeping on this unit. But let's go over some detailed clears now. All right, summoners, this is a typical thing that you're going to be looking at in the meta right now. And this is the Embla led Catria Ball that kind of takes away the ability for you to use your saves. Enter Gale Force. <laughs> now, I know these are some high level units in here. Keep in mind, these are also very low merges. So this is something that you can get to, but obviously Cordelia is the newest and greatest thing. Summoners, I wanna really look at how you're approaching this though. And that doesn't change depending on what team you have. It's always gonna be about the same. The first thing you wanna look at is what sort of effects are going on in this. And keep in mind that Embla has that guard effect going and she also has that feud effect, which is going to make a lot of difference. Edelgard also has guard. So this is going to be difficult to proc Gale Force on these two units. It's gonna to have, to have to be something that you look for another method. We'll get to that. Uh, the next thing is this Krom. And this Krom comes in so many deadly builds. Does it have vantage is one of the big things. If yes, you wanna be very careful about your bolt tower and how you use it. This one doesn't, however. The other thing is this is the attack defense unity version and not the close counter version, which would take also some different sort of things in order to get this to work. Um, you also need to understand Yoon and know that on turn two, you are going to see some massive debuffs across your team. And if this is critical, if it pushes you over the edge, you're going to need to watch your placement or have to burn a dance. Uh, the last thing here is refreshers. Actually, that's not the last thing. You need to be looking for warp inhibitors as well. I know there's only two of them, but that's, that's something that they'll probably give us more of. So is there a gatekeeper? Is there a legendary myrrh? Make sure you're keeping track so that your Wings of Mercy shenanigans can actually happen. So next, who is the savior you have to go up against? And obviously this is a melee team, so near save is what we're gonna be looking at. And this Edelgard is the premier near savior right now. If you're doing sims, this is the unit you need to be simming against. This unit is absolutely phenomenal, especially with deflect melee going on in order to stop the uh, summer Edelgards of the world. That's also going to hurt us just a bit with Cordelia, but the fact that we at least get more hits, four hits is better than two, right? <laughs> so keep that in mind as we're going. 
Um, summoners. I have done this in particular and seen that Elgar does stop Celef. Luckily, Cordelia is here to help us with that. Just <laughs> as you go through this, near saviors are kind of the same. So you're going to be going up against the same units every time and you'll get a, a rhythm. For instance, I know that against this brave Edelgard, Celef is always going to reach Wings of Mercy range. This Edelgard hits really hard. The next thing, how am I gonna get in and out and what is my approach? And let's go over that in particular. Now, remember, the thing that we're worrying about here is getting Celef there and making sure that he has dual strike available. So what I have to help that is this drawback, uh, near save, <laughs> drawback, near trace, Cordelia. And this is a neat little trick where you just sit that unit there and warp in. Notice that if that trap was real, then I could still warp and I would have been just fine. So we come in and summoners, this is unbelievable to me. I understand this unit has deflect melee. Oh, look at that. One, two, still has six left, but bounces back. And this ends up taking four hits to take out that unit. And Celef is a monster. That's the kind of unit that Brave Edelgard is. Now, as I said, Wings of Mercy is active and I knew that was going to be the case. So we're going to fly in with Peony. The reason I'm picking this Peony is because she has the duo skill and I want her closer to the action. We're gonna take Celef all the way around here because he has that four spaces of movement and can still do, still do stuff. We're going to take Asker. We're going to draw back here. And the next thing is I wanna make sure as many people are near Cordelia so we get the orders buffs and we also get dual strike active. The downside of course is as you saw, my entire team got massively debuffed. Um, if you're looking for that Sela, for instance, we have, yeah, minus six, minus nine. That's insane. <laughs> it's, the, it's the debuff life, right? Luckily we have Cordelia to help there. And I have this Ash set up specifically to be able to get her into position as well as be able to warp in all of these other units. Now, from here we have Celef and we're going to activate, yes, all the good stuff on Emla. Because of those debuffs, it means that I am not able to get that kill any other way. Now, remember, guard is active. So I am not procking Gale Force here. That is key to remember. And you have to know that that's probably not going to be a thing that you're going to get with Celef. <laughs> but now we have this nicely set up so that I can come with Cordelia. And if you're looking here at that, that means I'm going to hit Cordelia twice. And it means I'm going to be able to proc Gale Force because Cordelia is amazing. All right. Important to note here, there are some different things that can happen. If this was a close counter unit, we'd have to look at something different where we we end up dancing Celef, and actually we can do that right now. I wanna do that with the farthest away unit because I still have movement with Ash and this Peony. But you can see we might've had to do that in order to take out Krom if he had that close counter. As is he doesn't, and Cordelia is able to get him just normally. Because, say it with me, Cordelia's amazing. <laughs> We're gonna slide into position here. And now one of the things that we could have done is left her there in order to get a dual strike on Arden. As is, it isn't necessary because Celeste's true damage is based on defense and Arden has it. A lot of it. <laughs> so this 91 HP boy is going to just get smacked. I'd say life is good, but anytime an Arden dies, my, my heart hurts just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead in here and dance Celef, but we're gonna come in with Asker. And the thinking here is, I want the unit with the most HP to be in range of being hit by Triandra, which is the unit I'm trying to pin. And this is an important thing, trying to set these up, knowing where what units to put where, and also, if this went wrong, if something went wrong and I was not able to do anything but get Celef right there, know that Triandra is not going to kill Asker. Asker's got this made. We're gonna come through here. We're just gonna break that duo hindrance for giggles, I guess. Uh, we're gonna come in, use a duo skill. Again, we could have left, left Asker there, but I have 
I have been caught getting cute too many times. <laughs> Most of the time, play it safe if you can. We've got everyone set up with this pin. This unit isn't going any anywhere. And I've got to tell you, this is a very satisfying feeling when you get it done. We're going to end turn. All we have to do now is run around and get these spare pots that are lying around. We're just going to set you up to get maximum quadding here <laughs> against Trianda when she only needs one hit. So that's what we're looking at. Now, summoners. The real question you should be asking yourself is how long did that take the first time? This was a <laughs> this was a new team versus a new defense. Probably the clear would have taken about half an hour, which is a long time. But understand that as you do these, as you get better at them, you're going to go up against a lot of the same things over and over again. You're going to start to realize patterns and you're going to start to get quicker at how you do these. It does take practice, though. So this clear regularly probably would have taken, I, if you've done it a bunch of times, you could drop it down to five minutes, but more likely you're in the 10 to 15 minute range. So you remember at the top of this, we talked about Gale Force being more about action differentials. And that really puts that into focus with this clear. The first question you wanna ask yourself is, who is stopping me from winning this match? Like who are the threats and why? Uh, obviously Sigurd is a threat because of his range. So we have a unit like Duo Thor that kind of takes him out of the action completely. That means he's going to get exactly one space of movement, which is amazing. <laughs> Um, next we have Dogger, and the fact is I have a ton of flyers on this team, and this is a plus 10 duo Dogger. <laughs> so, how am I going to get this unit out and get her out early? The next unit we're looking at, we've got all of these Pathfinder units, and they're really enabling Krom. Now, the thing I'm going to be looking at here is if I can take him out some other way because Flame Tana, my, my carry here, is going to struggle with that unit because Red Bow. <laughs> I mean, those two things is going to be difficult. I'm going to really be looking at Sather to step up and be able to take that unit out. The last is Rhea, who I would struggle with normally, but we have a unit like Embla here. Summoners, all this is going to come together. And let me show you what exactly I'm talking about here. Now, first thing I want to do is, of course, get Flame Tana into range. We're going to do that with Sather. Keep in mind that Sather has to be as close to her target as possible because she needs to have enough res in order to freeze them. And the further away you get, the more res you need. First thing we're going to do is take out this dogger. Now, <laughs> First off, I can't believe Tana hits that hard. That's really neat. But we're going to slide back. And remember, we we talked about the blade checks on Tana and just seeing her be able to proc those because of the, the weapon triangle advantage she gets is fantastic. That Kanto one is amazing because I get to slide in now and use this peony. Um, it really, the, the amount of mobility you get out of that is phenomenal. You'd think one movement wouldn't matter, but <clears throat> let's talk about how we're going to get this unit out of the way so that we can get down to business and take out Krom. Turns out it's easy, but you will notice we do not outspeed this unit. <laughs> Plus 22 speed is a lot. Now we're stuck there and the one unit that's going to be able to hit us is Note. The question is, do we care? Since we have double the weapon triangle advantage here and pretty high speed, we're not particularly worried about this plus zero note. We're going to try to get everyone else into some sort of position where they can contribute next turn. Now we know this is a good space and I want Embla to be free to express herself. <laughs> now you notice we froze up that Krom, no longer an issue. Note is not a big deal. Rhea ends up frozen in place because Sigurd slides over. That's what I'm talking about with action differentials. We essentially took three units off the board there. That is phenomenal and lets us kind of isolate things and go about things at our own pace. We're not out of the woods yet because cleanup on these is not always easy. Although I am targeting, it's always important at the very beginning of this, you need to be targeting 
who do I want to keep alive so that I can get pots? And Rhea as a, a uh, an armor without added mobility, that's awesome. Now, we do have a red unit here and a red unit with some damage reduction, but we have lethality coming his way. And lethality's ridiculous. <laughs> ah, God, I love this unit. All right. We're going to leave that unit right there, but the biggest thing we're worried about is Krom and how to take care of him. The nice thing is we have given Embla some extra, some extra Kanto here to use. Now, did that trap matter whatsoever? No. Either way, we were gonna have to slide that unit over and dance. So we wanted to go ahead and test it and see that that was the real one. It could come in key. I Obviously right now it's not going to, but that's, a thing. I just want Sather up as close as possible here. That is the only reason for her being up there. And I was okay with hitting the trap because we're coming into end game. Now, uh, let's see. We actually can't do much here because Tana is lower HP <laughs> than, uh, than Thor. But if we use both duo skills, the real thing here is I want to try to get pots as soon as possible and just get those out of the way and removing that building enables me to do so. Ray is going to move up at a snail's pace, which I am all good with. Uh, we already know that that one's fake because of the last one we hit. This is easy. And just for fun, we're gonna have Sather get that last kill and notice that iceberg. Wow. Okay. <laughs> the thing you're asking yourself, it's the same thing, right? How long did that take in the real world? Grr, get him, Sather. Summoners, that took me about 15 minutes, um, maybe even less, but I've also used this team a whole lot. And I've gone up against Sigurd line, lines before, so I I knew pretty much what to do, and I had played with Sather enough that I was I was good with her inner workings and all of that. Um, it's about the same though as the last one. If this was brand new to you, it probably would take 30 plus minutes to get this done. It takes practice. Um, you also will find that teams you there are teams that you're more comfortable with than others. I, I love Flame Tana and the way she plays, so she kind of matches my style more than something like a Brave Seller. So Brave Seller would take me more time, Flame Tana would take me less. Uh, obviously, the, the amount of practice you're going to take is, <laughs> is huge to how well these things do. But we have one more clear to go over, and this is the Sather clear that just blew my mind when I got it to work. All right, summoners, we have one final clear here, and this one's interesting. This is a very well thought out defense, and this has some absolutely monstrous units. We've already seen the Edelgard, we've already seen the Arden, but the configuration they're in makes it a little harder to get to them. Uh, for instance, if you were to get here, you'd have to first break that block, worry about Kanto control, pull the unit out. It <laughs> There's a lot here, but you go through your checklist, all right? Do we have guard and <laughs> yes, we have guard in Arden. We have guard in Arvel. Uh, there's guard everywhere here. We have guard in Edelgard. I, <laughs> do we have vantage? No. So that means bolt tower is a nice option here. Also no close counter. I, summoners, this is this is kind of an interesting unit to think about in Joshua that, that uh, really hurts your tanking ability, but it's nice in terms of gale force. And then of course we have Mira. She's everywhere, right? So the question is, now that we've looked at all of that, we have two refreshers. So hit and run is going to be hard, not impossible. I've seen it done, but it is definitely hard. How are we going to tackle this team? And for that, I decided to look at a Krom. And the thing you want to think about is how are we going to get in and out? And that is this dual fury thing going on to make sure that Krom gets in Wings of Mercy range fairly quickly. So the other thing is though, since this Arden has Fallen Shield, that means Krom can't take him out without the help of Bolt Tower. <laughs> it's, there's a lot going on here. Let's dive in. So first thing we're going to think about is how we're going to get in. 
and I want to have everyone kind of surrounded around this area. The first thing we're going to do is check this pot and that is excellent news. So let's clear away some of the rubble so that our units can start taking advantage of all of the space that is being offered because again, Catria balls can't really have big threaten ranges because it gets them out of the range of triangle attack. So we can kind of slowly sneak up on the units that we're about to go up against. Let's go ahead and take out this bright shrine because it is or was hitting my crom and that's not fun. Let's go ahead and get a pot. Um, also, we could have chosen to get the duel's hindrance there. We, we didn't in this particular case because, well, I know how this turns out, but that is a good way to go. And what I'm doing here is trying to get my dancers as close to the front line as possible so that they can be of maximum use. Now, again, we know that pot is not good or that uh, that trap is not good. That's going to be important here in just a second. So we have the mass arveling of things. We have the bolt tower finally going off. Thank the Lord. We have taken out the healing tower so that they can't do anything about it. And we're going to come in here to Arden and notice how many hits this takes? Like this is special spiral ruptured sky. Sacred Cal hits it, knocks it down in 26 and it still takes two hits. Keep in mind, I had to get no follow up from Azura. Like <laughs> this is, this took some doing, but this is kind of the things you get into when you start specializing your teams, when you start getting units that you like a lot, you start bulking them up in weird different ways like infantry speed tactic. Next up though, we need to worry about Arvel and we still aren't in Wings of Mercy range. So we're going to come over here with good old Azra who is close by. We're going to take Arvel out, knock him off the board. So fifth bang, boom, rupture this guy happens and done. Still not in Wings of Mercy range. We need that third hit. Now, this is where things get just a little bit tricky. And like I said, if we had taken out those dual hindrance, I would have showcased how this would have brought options. But what we wanna look at here is the fact that that trap is in the way. What happens if that trap is real? If that trap is real, we're going to step on it. It's going to knock everyone's health down. It's going to make Wings of Mercy easier. And in general, it's just going to make us eat a dance and we'll have to really utilize that duo skill to make sure things work properly. Now, I will tell you that there is very few players that are going to make that a real trap because look at where it's situated and how many units that would take out. Like that is, yeah. <laughs> so I have good faith that it's not real but we still have to plan for that eventuality. And of course I've done this before, so not real. <laughs> Edelgard goes down, we rejoice. What happens next? Now we have a lot of options now that we are in Wings of Mercy range. And the first thing we're gonna do is have Regan come in and take out Katria. Now remember, Kanto control is coming, but we wanna start worrying about duo units and really just any unit with power. But I can tell you what I really want to see here is Sather to come in at the very last minute and freeze out one of these units so that we can really get things moving. We're gonna come down with Peony. Now, we're going to show off just a little bit because we see where Sather is and we're just going to push Krom forward without actually killing a unit, even though we could because we want to see Sather freeze out two units, which is something that's absolutely incredible. <laughs> now, it's worth noting here that this is kind of a flex that these two units both get popped. But it's still a good strategy and something you can use where you are, all you have to do is make sure those three units are in place and your Wings of Murky Mercy Beacon is in a spot where Sather can fly in and freeze them. This is a very viable strategy that you can use. And one of the reasons that Sather is so powerful, obviously we wanna finish up here with a pot. We'll, we'll let her get the last kill. We'll finish this off with Reagan because she is stalwart and true. And she has a machine gun. <laughs> and then we're going to get true damage in here on Krom. Okay. 
Now, <laughs> this map is much, much harder than the other two. And I actually had to call in Gale Force help on this one for a strategy as to how to beat that. Understand that there are going to be some maps like that that take you just an insane amount of time. I probably sat down with that map for about an hour with a friend and we, <laughs> John in the Discord, helped me out figure out different ways and different advantages to how that actually worked. So <laughs> thank you to John, but keep that in mind that the more practice you get, the better you're gonna get, obviously, but there are gonna be some maps like this that just take forever. Uh, the good news is that is a very common map, and so you will see it a ton of times. So the last thing we're gonna do is just general tips for this mode, and the first is you've gotta keep track of all the little effects that are going to influence how you're going to play. Right, we talked about it, but the guard, the anti-warping, the blade effects, the conditional weapons, all of those have gotta to work together, and you've gotta be good at knowing what's gonna do what. The next is pinning units reduces actions and also allows you to get pots. <laughs> so good teams will design with this in mind, but Sather makes this a lot easier. After some practice, you'll start to notice some signs, some things that say, yes, I can definitely get that unit pinned or no, I'm going to have to leave Rhea alive <laughs> and just let her move one space at a time. The next thing is keep track of your actions. You need to know how many actions you have left versus how many actions the enemy team has. And you need to make sure that you have enough to make sure either people are destroyed, <laughs> pinned, or frozen. This is really important because the best players will know when they need to turn their gear, their gear force into a hit and run. There are times when units take more hits than you thought. You need to have backup plans and ways to bail if you need. The last thing is, have fun guys. This is such a neat strategy. Uh, this, is, this is very satisfying. It's neat to have something come together when it was completely in your hands that you were able to take apart a puzzle. Now, if you're interested in more information on Sather because I love this unit, I'm gonna stick up my review of that unit as well as the other mythics and how I rank her. Summoners, take care and schedule an appointment with your fail just real soon.